still up to start the car in the morning, March 25th. Cold and rainy. It was like 30 last night. Still freaking cold. Still cold. I get into work early today. We're short staffed. So, went to bed late and up early. But, I go sometimes. I left my Karis Customs Inc. at the dealership. Just a little bit nerve wracking. Although, I think I know exactly where it is. And I was the last person there, I think. So, should still be there. We'll see. What do you think, Piper? Good morning. Let's quickly before I go, I got some old Waterman's in recently that I bought on eBay. This one's a 12 and a half PSF, I believe. Got the threads on there. Old Waterman lever filler. Thin one. And then this one's just a 52. Both are beat up, cracked, but both have nice nibs. Rather nice. So, I was working on them a little bit, got them both out. There's one of them. Fine and real flexible. And the other one is in this bin. It is an absolutely mint, perfect 52V. I gotta finish tuning it, but really nice. And that's how you do it. This is one of my favorite 52s. Just love that nib. It's not that flexible. Pretty flexible, but nothing crazy. This Schaefer, probably gonna be for sale soon. It's also super flexible. Alright, so I did get, um, last night we got the engine in the Eclipse, which is uh, an ongoing project that I've been working on with my buddy Anthony, um, who's a technician at the dealership as well. I've been friends with him for a very long time. Uh, we've been working on that, it's a my 1990 Eclipse, I think I told you about in the first vlog. Um, we've had the motor out of it now for about a year and a half since the fall of 14 I believe that's sound right yeah um, and finally last night it went in so that was huge we're really excited about that there's Fran really excited about that um, I'll show you once we get in there it's beautiful. We did a lot of work to that car. I'm really excited. It should make some crazy numbers when, it, when it's done. Let's see. I got a couple of pens recently just sold. We sold a Cardinal Red 52 that had a really nice nib. Like, I called it like elastic like flex. I love the ones that kind of push back really evenly all the way through um, the, you know, the pressure that you exert. Um, that was one of those. It was really nice. It was just really nice to write with. It just felt really nice. Nice and smooth. Extra fine. I smoothed that one myself. It came out really good, I thought. Um, and then I got rid of a uh, the deco band. Uh, Lapis Blue Wallover Sharp deco band that, in my opinion, didn't sell for nearly enough. That pen was unbelievable. Um, I actually paid more for it than I got for it, which is bad, but... It was worth owning it. That pen was amazing and had a huge, huge flexible nib on it. That was had some serious line. Very, that, another one that just, those big nibs are really, really cool to write with. It's a completely different experience that you have to, you have to have, you have to try out. You know, it's, I still think I like writing with the small, uh, like size two or three 
uh, nibs the most though. Um, you know, there's nothing like a really flexible little number two. I don't know, maybe it's just because I've used a lot more because uh, they're more readily available. Could be that, so I, I don't know. But yeah, I do, I do love them. I also got a, a finally got a bottle of Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc Irish Green. Um, and it's a really, really cool ink. I really, really like it. I have Pelican Edelstein Adventurine has been my go-to green for a while. Um, bright kind of green like that. The Irish Green's a little bit darker, but also seems to flow better. It seems to flow really, really well and shade really well. And I know that's that ink is on a lot of people's top five lists, so I was really excited to get that. I finally did. I also got a bottle of Ackerman Shocking Blue, which now that I have it is a must-have. That, that ink is unbelievable. Really cool, dark blue with a crazy pink slash red sheen, gold, red, and a little bit of gold, I think, mostly red sheen. Um, that's a really heavily pigmented ink that looks really nice and actually performs pretty well. Um, so that one I was really happy with. And those Ackermann ink bottles are awesome. If you haven't seen those, check them out. They have a like a marble in them. There's two chambers. There's a marble on the top. When you pour it over with the cap on, ink fills the top chamber. And then when you tip it back, the marble seats in the bottom and none of the ink comes out. So then the top chamber is full with ink so you can fill with it so you don't have to reach way down in there. Um, so that's really cool. I thought I've, I've never I don't I think it's the best bottle that I have Those are the best bottles that are made in my opinion Finally out of work for the day. I do have to come back tomorrow. It's Friday. I gotta come back for the weekend, which stinks. Every other weekend I have off. This weekend's not one of them, and I've been covering for my brother, so this will be the fourth weekend in a row that I've worked. So he can ski, because he likes to ski. So, um, I do have a return that I'm making. Um, I bought a Conklin 3NL, yeah, this is a Conklin 3NL Old Crescent um, from a seller online for cheap. You know, I knew it was cheap, looked a little bit oxidized, but what he didn't mention whatsoever and left out of the pictures was that the cap lip was cracked. Um, said no returns, the seller does not offer returns. I immediately in initiated a return when I open. Um, most of my eBay purchases I film the uh, unboxing so that you know just in case I got somebody who wants to claim that the cap was not damaged when they sent it or whatever I can show them I opened it up and here it is the first time my eyes saw it it was cracked and you can see me what I'm doing just a little safety net but um, so I initiated a return show them that it was cracked he immediately offered to refund me half. I told him I was willing to pay less than that and not anymore. And um, he didn't want it. So I'm returning it. That's fine with me. Um, so I'm sending it back right now. I just got the, uh, the shipping label and I'm sending it back. Because um, I have no use for a cracked cap 3NL. I was thinking about keeping it and looking for a cap. But, you know, for the money that he wanted for it, even cracked, it's just not worth it. So... I have plenty of pens, we'll say that.
like that place because uh, it's like a little country store, but they have full service UPS here. Besides PO boxes, they don't have that. Some stuff they don't do, but that's where I do all my shipping from. DeVos on Route 9. DeVos Rainbow Orchards. Family owned place. I gotta put my belt on around the camera. No. Um, I was thinking now since the last time I was talking here that how much I really do like Conklin's though it's a bummer you know I was excited I get really excited anytime I get a Conklin because I don't get them a lot you know I buy mostly Waterman's a lot of Wall Ever Sharps I don't get a lot of Conklin's and uh, and mostly it's because they're they're difficult to find in good condition a lot of times they're cracked um, I have Definitely a soft spot for Conklin's in my in my uh, collection, though, in my heart, because uh, a lot of them have really incredible nips. A lot of them have really, really flexible nips. Like, almost all of them, actually. Um, the older Crescent fillers, they have really, really flexible nips. And I think that Conklin's red-modeled pattern and material is the, the coolest looking and kind of the, the sharpest looking of any of the companies. Um, I have a red model 3NL that has been like my kryptonite. I have, and, and any time I've picked up the pen, it's cracked. I bought it on eBay, paid a lot of money for it. It was beautiful, completely uncracked, you know, you could, undamaged. You could tell it had been in a, in a, in an attic for, you know, probably 70 years. Um, the better part of a century, and it, uh, I took it apart and I was trying to get the feed and the section out and it cracked um, and I had that fixed and I finally got it back together and the nib cracked um, and then I was taking it off to take it out and the barrel cracked. So now it's a cracked mess and I kind of just put it away and uh, I was considering keeping this pen and, and at least using the nib in the, in the, the modeled one. But it's really not a pen you keep as a writer. It's just too fragile. The the, the rubber just is really flat, fragile. And if you look, almost all of these Conklin pens, the cap lips are cracked because the rubber is just really really fragile. But they really really made some amazing nibs. Some of the some of the best flex nibs that I have used, um, and they kind of go unnoticed a little bit. You know, you hear a lot more about Waterman and Wall Ever Sharp. So I do really love. Conklin's. We are going to a wedding tonight. Um, one of Fran's family members' friends. Uh, I don't know that well, so um, not gonna be bringing the camera kind of all throughout there because it's a pretty big camera and people stare at me that I don't really know and probably be like, why is that person who kind of shouldn't even be here taking pictures of all of us? Hey, Piper. Hey, Viper. Hey, Viper. You're smiling at me. You're smiling, girl. You're smiling. You're a good girl. Oh, she's a good girl. Day after the wedding here. A little bit of a late start to work. Um, 9.03. I did tell them that. I'm kind of working an extra day. Picking up an extra day, like I said, for my brother. So I told them, because of the wedding, I probably wasn't going to be exactly on time and I was right maybe I wasn't on time because I told them that probably more like that I knew I didn't have to be probably could have made it but it was fun um, a lot of fun really really beautiful place I had it at so that was cool um, I really got to work on some pens I got I have no pens up for sale right now and I haven't for like two days and um, it's because of the car. I've been really trying to work on this car. Uh, my Eclipse, as much free time as I get, so I'm really split between the, you know, that's taken up all of my free time. I mean, every second. And not to mention doing things with family and whatnot. So and this weekend is Easter. So tomorrow, a lot of that day, all of after 12 o'clock is going to be consumed with family and, and whatnot so um, probably the whole day actually but I'm gonna see what I can do tonight Fran has some things planned for us Saturday um, realistically maybe later tonight I would like to uh, I would like to try and 
do some work, so we'll see. Like five? I'll be, I'll be probably 45 minutes. Look at what I got you. Apple? No, peach mango. Oh, nice. Alright. guy next door is getting a uh, Z3 that he's wanted for so long. Happy for him. It's pretty cool. He has wanted one of those for, since we since we moved in here. He's been talking about getting one of those, so it's cool. Great day to buy a new car. Freaking beautiful out right now. Absolutely beautiful out right now. All right. So yesterday I told you about um, the incident with the. Conklin 3NL that I bought on eBay. It had a crack in it, so I sent it back. You know, that's the bad thing about eBay. You know, the or the yeah, the not so good part about eBay is there are deceitful people out there. eBay made it right, you know, and for the most part, eBay makes those things right. Um, I have never really been screwed on eBay. I think for the, I think it's much more easy to be screwed as a seller than as a buyer. They really always side with the buyer. Um, so I do worry about that. I'm, I'm, you know, selling expensive pens to people overseas and whatnot. And some people are just dishonest, and it's as simple as that. Um, but today I got in the mail a um, red modeled Waterman 14 that has an awesome nib on it. That was, it's one of those ones that, um, you know, it's a kind of, it's a beat up, ugly pen, missing the clip. But I could just tell based on the shape of the nib that it was most likely going to be really flexible and it is really flexible um, it's really really cool so I'll, uh, maybe when I get back I'll give you a little writing sample of that that would be cool all right Easter Sunday here going to going to a uh, breakfast um, got the green on green Easter egg brown pants so I decided to carry Pen. Got some sort of real light blue in it. Uh, ink wise. Fran's yelling at me to lock, lock the house. Alright. I'll show you a couple uh, newer pens I have here. One of these is the 14 that I was telling you about. That's this one. It's actually missing its clip. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier when I started discussing it. It's missing the clip there. Um, the pen is rather oxidized, the barrel, um, I can fix that. The clip, I have not riveted a clip yet, so I may send it out, I'm not sure, I may, uh, I may decide to do something different with it, but it has a really nice number four size nib in it um, that I just got today, literally today, I've written with it only a couple times. Um, as you can see, this kind of follows the rules that I discuss in my how to buy flex nibs off of eBay video, uh, low shoulders, long tines. Uh, on the back there, this is one of the giving, one of the factors that really gave it away is there's no ridge at all, um, you know, on the underside. Um, and so that was really what made me think it was flexible and it went for cheap and you know people like red model pens so I picked it up and uh, it's it's awesome it's really really nice the other pen that I have here is a 112 um, this one has the cap intact this one I got from a good friend of mine kind of friend of mine um, who always helps me points me in the right direction um, with pens and whatnot that she sees. Um, this one has a number two size nib because it's 12, of course. Also, rather oxidized. The cap's actually not in bad shape. Um, you know, the, this clip cap, this is an early Waterman's pen for sure. Uh, the patent date on the cap is visible, which is not common on a lot of the Waterman caps. You don't see that. September 26th of 1905. 
And how cool is that? Um, this barrel is rather oxidized. Um, the Waterman's imprint is rather dim. Probably not visible. Uh, you can kind of see it a little bit there. If you get there. But rather oxidized. So it's worn. But the nib is really, really, really nice. Uh, this is a size 2 Waterman's nib, of course. And similar shape to the 4. And that's why I put these pin these two together for this video. Low shoulders, uh, rolled shoulders, or rather rolled, absolutely no ridge underneath, a very, very slight ridge underneath, but mostly none. The metal is very thin, you can see right there. Paper thin metal, you know, and that, and that helps. Um, you can kind of get a feel for what kind of alloys they use, you know, depending on how thin it is. Um, and it's incredibly flexible. This is a really, really flexible nib, so I'll do a quick little bit of writing. Yeah, I guess we'll go up in nib size first. So, I actually had this nib in another pen until very recently, so bear with me if it doesn't write immediately. It should. Give myself out. Now, obviously, if you get the best of both worlds, that amazing dramatic flex on a dip nib with the convenience of carrying it around in your fountain pen, well, essentially, now you're just rewriting history because that's kind of how things were. You had dip pens first, then the technology of a portable ink reservoir in your pen ousted the uh, need for dip products and then you had this amazing portable ink well you know that's kind of how they were marketed at first then you know late 1800s early 1900s when they started being popularized and reliable enough to carry around that you know and then you know you had a lot of flex nibs that's part of this why is a really flexible nib on the ones you I have to be careful careful with, with the ink because it will, uh, you know, this nib is, you, you really have to have a super soft hand to deal with a nib like this. It, if, if, you're, if you're careless with it, you will ruin it on your first touch. This is not a nib that I would lend to anybody. Anybody. There are few nibs that I let... Um, Fran use, or that I don't let Fran use, and this is one of them. This is one of the ones you, you don't let anybody use. It's really soft. Really soft. And actually, that's why uh, the friend I mentioned gave it to me. She, she bought it, um, and it was just too soft for her. And she's been using fountain pens for a long time, and she said it was too soft. Now, and that's said, not, and and that's. You might think nothing. There's nothing too soft, but there really is. Um, at some point, it, it just becomes too soft. I, however, love super super soft nibs. I love super soft nibs. So this, the 14, is a little bit less soft. Uh, probably has more maximum line variation though, um, because it's a bigger nib, so the tines are longer. Uh, there's more metal there, and, and therefore more potential to lay down some ink. This is also a really nice writer. Um, this pen, that last one, uh, that's a Waterman's Inspired Blue. This is a small Tomo River pad. And this pen has uh, Mont Blanc Irish Green, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but that said, I've known a number of people that have done it successfully. Uh, it's not something that I openly am like, yeah, do it, and I'll guarantee it's going to work. You know, I don't do that because it's, it really requires some tinkering. So you are welcome to try it. I think you'd have a blast. Jen has a great pen to do it with because it's cheap. I will is talking about putting a dip nib in a Jin Hao pen. First time he's talked about it, and he's not condoning it, but acknowledging it is a good idea. And that it is. I've done that. Uh, I've met more than one of those, and they're great. Everybody should do that. So if you haven't done that, definitely do that. But don't stop watching this video. Look at that. Serious ink there. Another thing, for people looking for a flex green, there is no better flex green than Irish green. Mont Blanc Irish green is the best flex green that you will get. Nothing flows like this ink. It's spectacular. It's a beautiful deep green color. But so as you see here, 
this is a really nice nib. Um, really, really large line variation. This is probably a approaching three millimeter line variation nib. And it's it's nice and soft, really soft. So, um, both of these nibs and both of these of these nibs will be for sale soon. I'm not sure exactly which pen they'll be in. Um, keep keep an eye out for them soon. You should be able to identify them visually um, when I do post the listing of which pen they they end up going in. Um, I don't have anything on eBay right now, so I assure you that with the, the vlogs and everything, I am working to get some more pens on eBay for you because my favorite part about fountain pens is getting awesome nibs and then giving them out, not giving them out, but selling them to other people and hearing their feedback. Um, the... Uh, Gentleman who just bought the red Cardinal Red 52 that I sold on eBay last week, earlier this week, received it today and sent me a really nice message on eBay. Um, and that's just that's what I do this for. I love it. Um, it's really really cool when you get people excited about the the hobby who are kind of new to it and who can get their hands on something really really nice like that um, like the pens that that I sell and and can kind of see what it's all about um, that's that's definitely a big part of what of why I do all of this um, and it's and it's developed into that it's not why I started you know I, I uh, never thought it would get to this kind of but it has um, and it's really exciting. I really, really like hearing feedback from people when, when, I, when they sell these pens. So I put a lot of time into these pens. Um, I make them as beautiful as they can be, and I pair the best nibs with the best pens, and I tune them until I can sit here and write with them like this for hours perfectly, and that's when they leave me. And, uh, and it's just awesome to hear people because it's really... The experience that I was looking for when I was getting into pens, that's what I make sure that if you buy one of my pens, that's what you're going to get. It's uh, the, it's very, I don't know how you could be disappointed with a pen that I sell. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, so, hope you enjoyed the vlog. Um, I really like making videos like this. Hopefully I will make more. Um, so stay posted. They are coming. There's going to be more pens for sale. One, uh, a variation of some, some of the pens or nibs that you've seen here today uh, should be for sale and there should be a, a demo videos on the, on the channel soon. So stay posted um, and I'll see you next time.